Gadget, and I've got SCE Worldwide Studios head Shuhei Yoshida, and uh, Richard Marks, your, your title escapes me, it's R&D at Magic Lab. <laughs> Director of Magic Lab, it's a new group. And Director of Magic R &D. Lab. Yeah. And you guys have created, uh, the well, you're part of creating, the Project Morpheus, the VR headset that's coming to the PlayStation 4 at some point in the future. Uh, I don't think that we have a, an idea of when yet. I think not this year, right? That's what you guys are saying yet so far. Yeah. Okay, so we know that right off the bat. Yes. So let's go way back to where this all started. Um, I'd kind of like to see, uh, I guess I'm, I'm hearing 2010? Yeah, so this was not an um, official project when you know people started experimenting. And the, what helped them experiment it was the PlayStation Move. So 2010, you know, everybody got in the uh, PlayStation Move and uh, they realized that they can just use it and attach to the, whatever the viewer that was available at uh, that time to create the handmade, you know, VR kind of, you know, uh, headset. Sure. And uh, I showed the photo of uh, Santa Monica Studios guys' work, you mm -hmm. know, 2010 and 2011. But Santa Monica Studios was not the only team, you know, uh, experimenting on something like that. So I was uh, in a lucky position to be, you know, called upon and shoot, you know, come here, you know, I show something. <laughs> and they take photo of me trying it. Sure, and uh, I was really amazed, you know, you know, I talked about the Good War demo that uh, they hacked together using, you know, PS3 right, right. game. Yeah. And uh, I, 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 my body was, uh, you know, Kratos, you know. Sure. So I was like, wow, this one moment, number one. The other moment was the SCA R&D guys, you know, used the Half-Life 2. And, uh, uh, and adapted in you know, PlayStation Move so that I was able to see my hand you know, holding the gun like this and shoot in the enemy like that. That was a really compelling experience. And so I was totally become the you know, believer sure. in this space. Yeah. I guess I'm, I'm wondering how, it seems like all of this stuff is happening at once between Sony doing stuff, Valve doing stuff, Oculus doing stuff. There's some, some other folks doing stuff, but I think those are kind of the big three players doing VR stuff right now. And it, it seems like too much of a coincidence for this all to be at once. <laughs> yeah, it's not a coincidence. I mean, <laughs> this happens in, in technology, right? There's sure. all the pieces become possible and then it's just putting them together the right way. And the display technology, the, uh, the graphics horsepower it takes to render it all, the tracking, all those things had to happen for it to be a good experience. And they all, they're all available in different forms to different companies, but sure. you know, and that's why you're seeing it happen now. And uh, talking about the you know, driving you know, experience, actually the Evolution guys you know, uh, experimented with their uh, own port base, okay. you know, our, with the early prototype. Mm -hmm. And uh, to, to, to just clarify one thing, there's a rumor that the reason that the drive club was pushed back was to, you know, to make it compatible with you know, Project Morpheus. And that's not totally true. Not you know, totally true. That, that's not true at all. Okay, there we yeah, go. Yeah, there we that's go. not true at all. So they are big believer in this space, but they had to stop work on that, you know, to get the drive, you know, drive club out. So their sole focus is to get the game out, but they were working on, you know, early prototype, sure. you know, before the drive club was in a full, you know, development. I'm interested in talking about the prototype a little bit in terms of where you guys want to go next. Not talking about the final project, I understand, but uh, the limitations and the hurdles that you're looking at in terms of what you have right now. Um, I think this has been a big part of the Oculus folks' success has been bringing out their prototype and saying, you know, these are the limitations, this is what we need to get, need to get past, this is what we really want. So what is that for you guys? Well, there's a variety of things we know we can improve on. I mean, all the things that I listed in our talk about the display technology, sure. even the sound technology and the tracking technology, and even the controllers we know we can do a little more with than we're doing now. All those things we can get better. Probably the thing we most want to do is reduce the kind of uh, latency that there is between when you have a motion and when it shows up on the screen. For sure. And we know we can improve that, so that's probably the biggest thing we are going to focus on. We are pretty happy with what we have as a dev kit, you know, development kit for you know, game developers to start making stuff. But uh, you know, for the consumer product, you know, we really want to make sure that ev everyone, almost everyone, can enjoy this experience. So we know, you know, certain tech, you know, uh, uh, aspect we have to improve, and we know this can be these tech issues can be solved, you know, by time. You know, all these things are, you know, are evolving so pretty rapidly. So we've talked a little bit about the technical 
hurdles that you might have to face next. Uh, let's talk about the other hurdles, right? The, the consumer hurdle of putting a thing on your head. Yeah. Uh, and VR having, hair problems. <laughs> VR hair problems, for instance. Uh, or uh, getting my mom to put that kind of thing on, right? Like, I don't think she will. Even if it's, like, that Mars demo is amazing. And something that my parents might like, right? Like, something that somebody who doesn't play video games would like, right? Uh, but at the same time, it's still putting on a big thing and whatever else, right? Like, it's something that people might be reticent to do, uh, especially to spend hundreds of dollars to have that experience. Uh, so how how do you get past that, right? Like, I, how do you make people convinced? Well, there's some level of encumbrance, right? And we want to minimize that as much as possible. But what really has to happen is experience has to be something that's worth it to you. And, sure. And sure. I really think that you know a lot of people would like to stand on Mars. Yeah, like uh, one video which was, you know, I, I'm sure you, you know, saw on YouTube was the 90 year old grandma <laughs> yeah. trying Oculus. Uh -huh. Yeah, something like that. You know, you know, of course you need someone to help put you know, that thing on the, you know, already. Uh, sure. But people, I think of myself, you know, getting older. I really like, you know, traveling. You know, going to visit, you know, different places, beautiful places, you know, big monument, you know, historical places. Sure. But I know if I, when I get older, you know, I might not want to travel that much, you know, time difference and whatnot. So I really want to see the time when I get old that, that I can visit anywhere in the world or even some, you know, Uber world or fantasy world that I want to go to where I feel really comfortable or happy or kind of have some interaction with, you know, real people or, you know, AI-driven, really nice people. <laughs>Big step is to produce in volumes of this, you know, prototype as dev kit and get in the hands of as many, you know, PS4 game developers. And uh, we know that many developers are very interested I'm to sure, work yeah. on it. And I have huge hope, you know, for indie developers because they come up with really great, you know, new ideas. Sure. And uh, one of the event, you know, in uh, Kyoto in Japan last week, there's an event called Beat Summit. Yeah. That's uh, about you know indie games. And the, there's an award, the top award went to a team who created you know, games on PC with Oculus, uh, okay. o using Oculus and headset, uh, was called you know, Zombie Taxi Driver. It's like a, you know, <laughs> a, a, a crazy taxi kind of game. You sure. drive the car in a first person view mm -hmm. and you pick up zombies and uh, you, you know there's a zombie sitting <laughs> next to you and creating some you know str str strange sound in sure. your ear or like that that's kind of ideas uh, you know very indie spirit so uh, i'm so excited to be able to get in the hands of indie you know ps4 developers so you know we really want to give a lot of time to you know, developers so that they can come up with really interesting new uh, ideas and demos and hopefully uh, by E3, you know, uh, you know I, I, I'm so looking forward to seeing some new contents on this. So developers already have it then? Is that the, the idea? Uh, not yet. Not yet. Yeah, yeah, so far there are very small number of kit were created and right. uh, worked very closely with uh, you know, our hardware and uh, software tech team. But at this stage, you know, the uh, prototype is stable enough that the, we can give to many more teams because you know the tech support will be much much easier at this point. Yeah, I mean from a development point of view, this is basically a, a line where we're saying this one will be supported for our developers, and then we again start to iterate again on it with a small number of people, but a large number of developers use this kit. This kit, right? Right. So uh, if I'm a developer and I want to start developing on Project Morpheus today, how do I do that? Yeah, contact Adam Boys, you know, send tweet <laughs> or Shahi, Shahi, AM boys. Yeah, or Shahi. Sure. Yeah, sure. That's a good start. Okay, fair enough. All right, well, thank you very much, gentlemen. And uh, we look forward to hearing more about Project Morpheus in the months to come. And get an idea uh, for how these, uh, this works, right? So I, I, I am in the world and it's tracking my body. The uh, PlayStation uh, camera is tracking my...